Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. That's pathetic. <laughs> but I'll let you pass. You know, oh, so it says now recycle name badges. I thought with Dave's assignment that probably, you know, you're supposed to be listening to me. I assume there's a quiz at the end. But apparently it's just turning your name badge back in at the end. I thought that's what those, those uh, bins were for up here. Do you realize what great jobs you have? Do you really understand that? You wake up every morning, every single morning, poised to address the most significant problems in global society. There are an awful lot of people who don't get that choice. And so I hope when you wake up in the morning, even when it's on the wrong side of the bed, that at least a corner of your mind understands just what a great opportunity you have in your career choice. I, had, I was down the other end of the hall yesterday afternoon. President Gee has a, uh, a group of, of Ohio State alumni uh, who are engaged one way or another <coughs> excuse me, in uh, advocacy at the state and federal level. So once in a while he brings this team in to advise him on government affairs. And uh, it was my first Ohio State opportunity to do my little quiz that I do all the time. So I asked them, just by way of getting to know the audience, how many of them would characterize themselves as you know, really engaged in agriculture. And Yvonne Lasico from the Ohio Farm Bureau raises her hand. After the fact, President Gee said he was raising his hand. I think he was just eating his cookie. But, you know, nobody else in the room raised their hand. And so here's the obvious question, and, you know, it would be obvious to you too, I think. Are there any eaters in the room? Anybody pumped gas with 10% ethanol in it? Nice cotton sweater you've got on there, Casey. You ever admire a <laughs> nice wool sweater you have on there, Casey? Doesn't matter, does it? It's not polyester. But we'll fix that soon anyway. You know, you ever admire the hardwood floor and the nice hardwood, hardwood dining table that you have on that floor? We're in everybody's life every single day. There is nothing more central than the work that we do. And sometimes you really fall pretty far down into the weeds. You know, that's primarily in our Horton Crop Sciences group, but, you know, the rest of us get down there too. And it can be a little difficult to remember just what impact we have, how central we are to society, how much the future rides on what we do, the innovation and creativity we bring to our jobs, and the work that we do training folks to be even more creative in the next generation. You know, I have been here six months. Uh, there are those who say I get to stop using the new guy uh, label about any time. After all, I started in 2012, and here we are in 2013. Uh, you know, I've spent a lot of this last six months learning. I have said forever that I am a deep believer in lifelong learning. And I've got to tell you, these last six months have really put that to the test. Uh, fortunately, I have discovered it was not just verbiage, that there actually is joy in learning what a new organization is all about. Uh, we do some amazing things, and I truly feel I've just scratched the surface of what our capacity is. Prior to that six-month-ago starting date, when I was talking to uh, the university's uh, premier salesperson, President Gee, uh, about what opportunities this position might actually entail, he sat me down and was talking about the trajectory of The Ohio State University. And we started, he made it very clear at the start that he wanted to tell me a little bit about where Ohio State was going as an institution. And the more he talked, the more I thought he'd forgotten what he said he was going to talk about because he was talking about what this college does. He was talking about food production and security, health and wellness, energy and the environment. And it was only when we came back around in the conversation and connected the dots was I able to clarify that he truly was talking about the trajectory of the entire university over the next decade. And so one of the things I want to share with you this morning is just six months in, some of my thoughts about 
what this trajectory means to us here in the college and how we should be preparing ourselves to capitalize on this. Now Dave uh, did me the favor of putting up the slide on our own signature areas and you can see that there's substantial resonance between what we've been doing for a number of years and the directions that the university has defined as our major thrust areas. That clearly is an asset. We're already thinking in the way that the university is now being asked to think. But what are our other assets? I had an opportunity a couple of weeks ago to speak to the Board of Trustees to one of the committees that deals with uh, college activities. Uh, they were asking, I think they'll eventually cycle through all of the colleges. We were second in line. Arts and Sciences had gone some months ago. But I was asked to <coughs> excuse me, fill out a template of, of uh, slides that they provided. And the really fun part was at the front end where I was able to to identify some of the things that wake me up in the middle of the night, uh, things that we see as strengths, opportunities, weaknesses, threats, the, the standard sort of, of thinking around uh, strategic planning. But it gave me an opportunity to really sit down and put on paper uh, some of these defining aspects. So what, what are our assets here in the college? Well, there's a great starting point we identified some time ago as the most important things on which to focus, the things that the university is now saying are the most important things on which to focus. We got a head start. We're already thinking about these areas. We have an extraordinary faculty. And as I've had a chance to, to meet more and more of our students, uh, you know, grad students down to undergrad students, we have some really quality people here. I've known for years, Dave mentioned that I served in a couple of administrative roles at Penn State. That gave me an opportunity to do uh, environmental scans on a regular basis. I've always said, if we're afraid to benchmark against others, we shouldn't be in the business we're in. We have to constantly be challenging ourselves to say, with whom are we competing? With whom do we want to partner? You know, where do we stand relative to our peers? And Ohio State was frankly one of the peer institutions. It was a no-brainer for me to look at at that other institution as I was looking at uh, potential partners, competitors, et cetera. And I've known for a decade of the international reputation, not just a state-based reputation, not just a national reputation, but an international reputation of the faculty and programs here. We here in CFAES, as I would argue is true of colleges of ag across the nation, have a tendency to be interdisciplinary, to be collaborative. That will work to our advantage. Again, we're already predisposed to reach out and make connections. We do that in part because of the disciplinary breadth that's housed within the, within the college itself. But I think our college is one that has demonstrated through practice that we're not constrained by administrative boundaries. Now there are things we can do to continue to, uh, to create that mindset. Uh, we can work on some of the, the little administrative details that, that we will, will allow us to be even more effective. But we're starting from a great point. You, you know, you guys, you don't care what the department, college, university boundaries are. You reach out to colleagues wherever you need to find them. You know, these assets manifest themselves in a lot of different ways. Uh, Steve had an opportunity to talk to our advisory council, our external group, uh, just the other day, and demonstrated that, uh, and I think you all know this, over the past decade, our extramural grant portfolio has increased three to four fold. Now, that's a significant achievement. And that's largely because, it's entirely because of the creativity that you all bring to the table. We're not at a cap on that yet, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. We have room to grow there. Uh, it's been a few years back now, but uh, you know we don't have a whole lot of rankings in agriculture, those national rankings. We don't show up very frequently in the uh, US News and World Report rankings, but uh, a couple years ago, the National Research Council ranked graduate programs. That ranking system was a little funky, but it was largely based upon the excellence of faculty. Those were the metrics that were used. And 
our programs that were ranked did very well relative to peers. Many of them were, were in the top quartile of programs around the nation. And so that's another indication of the success of the people that we have here. Recognition by your peers, they seek you out for projects. They want you as part of, of uh, these multidisciplinary, multi-institutional research projects. You know, that actually is a metric of success. You have a reputation that actually makes you attractive. In fact, one of the reasons that I chose to use Ohio State as a benchmark in my previous role was the fact that when I looked at these multidisciplinary, multi-institutional projects, not only were you all on them, you were frequently leading them. And I think that is a really important indicator of uh, the assets that we have here. And then, you know, I've had an opportunity to interview, uh, you know, probably about 15 to 20 faculty candidates for a variety of different positions over this past six months. The quality of the applicant pools that we're seeing is really exceptional. People want to come here to be part of this party. They want to be on our team. And that, my friends, is a very, very important indicator of the strength of what we have here. So we start with a, a really important set of assets, and we need to celebrate those things. Now, wherever there are assets, there are liabilities. And you know, my job as cheerleader in chief is to really be thinking about the, the balance of different things so that I know where to spend time uh, focusing my energies. And, you know, we do have some liabilities that we need to acknowledge. Our facilities are not what they should be. As we start talking about the kind of faculty that we want to recruit to the future, the sort of students we want to attract, the quality of research that we want to conduct, we need to do that in 21st, maybe even 22nd century facilities. Knowing how long it takes to get facilities replaced, we probably should be thinking 22nd century. But the fact is, uh, we're working in early 20th century facilities in many, many cases. And we need to address that. And so that's going to be a, a critical component of what we try to accomplish here yet in 2013. In some ways, geography is a liability. I asked Dave this morning if he'd had the train, the, the bullet train running down from Worcester to here. You know, when I came here to Ohio State, knowing what my responsibilities were going to be, I was absolutely thrilled to discover that the state capital, where I spend an awful lot of time, was not 90 miles away, it was nine minutes away. Rejoiced in that fact. And then I discovered a third of my faculty were 90 miles away. <laughs> so, okay, all right. And I'm still trying to sort out which one of those I would, I would rather trade off. But uh, the fact is, you've seen me up at Worcester a number of times, and you'll continue to see me up at Worcester. We need to do a great job of making those miles disappear. I can tell you, relative to today's uh, uh, conference topic, at Penn State, our medical school was 90 miles away. And it created real barriers. It was hard to bridge that geographic gap. Now, the really good thing here is that we have been working with that geography for a long time. And we're probably as far ahead in terms of the ability to virtually communicate uh, than any, any of our peers around the nation. That's something to really be uh, uh, happy with. But the fact is that we still need to find ways to make sure that there are not uh, gaps that are, are uh, due to geography. The uh, third liability I would highlight is one that's really an externality to all of us. It's the funding climate. You know, we went to the edge of the fiscal cliff, kicked a couple pebbles over, stepped back just a little bit, stepped back up to the specter of sequestration, that federal, um, I, I hesitate to call it legislation, but I guess that's what it was, that federal approach that was so frightening, so devastating, that we would never do it, and we did it. And i got to tell you, there are a lot of people that are saying, well, we've done it, and huh, things aren't that bad. And we didn't have to vote on anything. 
Hmm. So, you know, we've got to be a little cautious about how we look at, at the future. We are very reliant on, on federal funding. The state of Ohio continues to be very supportive in terms of, of, of money that they provide for projects. But the way of the future will be competing successfully for those federal grants. And this is a confusing and confused climate right now. And so we do have to think about that pragmatically as we think about where we go in the future. So assets, liabilities, you know, the, the, the marriage of these two for me is let's analyze our prospects. Let's, let's talk a little bit about what we can do given our starting points. Well, what I want to carry, the message I want to carry to you this morning is this critter called the discovery theme is absolutely a once in a career opportunity for all of us. Absolutely an opportunity that we have to embrace. <clears throat> the facilities master planning that's being done, it's been accomplished at the university, it's still a work in progress uh, for us. It's the oft-cited move east, the move across the river. There's an opportunity there if we take control of that. And new funding streams, the prospects for money are out there despite our concerns about uh, the way of the future. How do we, how do we embrace uh, industry-sponsored research? Ohio, or, or excuse me, Ohio State don't want to confuse it with Ohio University because you start talking about technology and industry and they actually are in the lead down at Ohio University. So uh, Ohio State is one of the nation's top two or three universities in terms of industry-sponsored research. And we have a lot of connections, but if you look at our portfolio, it's nickels and dimes. It's not checks with six, seven, eight figures. We need to change that. We need to find ways that we can work with those industry partners because there is a, a demand for research and development that we can tap. We need to broaden our portfolio of extramural government sources. We are excellent competitors for those federal grants, but in point of fact, we have to be even better competitors and we have to reach out to more agencies. Uh, Steve, I think you said the other day that in the extramural federal grants, about 40% of our funding is, is USDA. That's a very natural thing, I think, and you know, it's a reflection that we are working very hard both in the foundational and the interdisciplinary programs that USDA advertises. But we need to really plow ahead with the National Science Foundation, with the National Institutes of Health, with the Department of Energy, with DARPA. The military is the single largest, U.S. military is the single largest user of food in the world. How do we tap into some of the needs that they have? How do we work on some of the advanced materials kinds of needs that they have, the biofuel needs that they have? There are lots of opportunities out there and we need to position ourselves even better to take advantage of those things. So prospects, I would submit to you, are quite strong. But not going to come to us if we sit and wait for them to come. What do the discovery themes really mean for us? So the discovery themes, you know, we could put Dave's slide of our own uh, emphasis areas back up. And as I said earlier, there's a lot of resonance. You know, every organization worth its salt has identified grand challenges. So whoopee, we've got three discovery themes. Everybody's got discovery big organization, little public, private, you name it. They all have identified the grand challenges. The real issue is what do you do with that identification? And Ohio State is putting its money where its mouth is. Whether you like leasing parking or not, that money is actually being re reinvested in academic excellence. Over the next decade, university will use the proceeds from that kind of entrepreneurship to actually hire more of you. We anticipate in the next 10 years that about 1,500 of our faculty will turn over through natural processes. So attrition, retirement, uh, we'll not talk about other natural processes that might cause them to turn over, but 
you know, let's just let's focus on on those sorts of things. Those fifteen hundred people, we expect to to use that funding to invest in the next generation. And this infusion from the university is designed to cap that with an additional five hundred colleagues for all of you. The fifteen hundred are designed to help us keep the wheels on our programs as they evolve and grow into the future. The 500 are designed to ensure that in a select number of areas where we're positioned to be the best in the world, that we invest to bring those folks in to help lead us there. Not very many of, the, of those organizations that have identified those uh, great challenges, the, uh, the opportunities, have actually found a way to implement them. If you if you look at the Chronicle of Higher Education, just this morning there was an article that said University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign is going to invest in 500 new faculty. When you read down through it, it's a mix of cluster hires and, and filling within departments. And they, do, they have identified funding to do this, but it's basically trying to get them to claw back to a status quo from five years ago. We're assuming we're growing from where we are now. And so... You know, some of these other, Nebraska in agriculture has, has announced that they're going to be seeking a few dozen faculty. We have a position of the high ground, I would submit to you, and it's through a, a combination of thinking across the university, embracing these themes, but also uh, it will be incumbent upon us to really grab hold of that ring as we spin round on the merry-go-round. Right now, work is in progress on these discovery themes. Uh, there are three faculty panels who are engaged in, in really identifying where our areas of expertise ought to be. We are represented on all three of those. A lot of the folks that represent us are in the room today. Uh, Katrina Cornish is on the Energy and Environment team. Uh, Linda Safe and Steve Schwartz are on the, uh, the Health and Wellness team. Uh, the food, food production and security. See, I almost said food security and production. That's us, not them. And uh, actually, we suggested that they switch it to food security and production. They said, no, that's your colleges. So they're, they're copying us. But that's okay. You know, imitation is the a, is a, uh, highest form of that. So uh, we've got Casey Hoy. We've got Ken Lee, uh, Jeff Lejeune, Linda Labeo, Sudhir Sastry all from our college. And then on top of that, we've got a lot of friends of our college. Mark Faia, your Mark's back here in the back. Uh, uh, Eric Grotewald, um, uh, Jill Clark, uh, Terry Bucci from up at Mansfield, who's a member of our Food Innovation Center. So that those boards are really very well represented by brains from our college in terms of visioning what our specific focus areas will be for the future. Uh, I think we're in very good, very good position there. Um, you know, they're going to be working to, they're, they're doing an environmental scan. They're going to be working to define where our clusters of investment ought to be. Uh, the timetable is to have some guidance uh, by the end of the summer so that as we move into the next academic year, we're really poised to begin taking advantage of these things. And the greatest investment, folks, will not be in the three themes themselves, but in the bridges across those themes. So when you begin to think about this, you know, today's topic, health and wellness, is, is one of the discovery themes. But health and wellness itself is a bridge across. You know, Dave, you said you don't know this area because you do infectious diseases. Hmm. I think there's a health and wellness component to that, and it bridges across to energy and environment because one of the united, uniting variables in many human health challenges is, in fact, water, which is very much an environmental parameter. And oh, by the way, in food safety, that comes right back around through production, you know, what you're irrigating with, all the way through to processing. So there are connections across all of these things, and I think the fact that the investment will be in the intersection areas is really a great positive for us as well. Now, just one little word of, of uh, uh, encouragement to you. 
I don't envision the next 10 years that we invest only in faculty where they're part of these discovery teams. We have a lot of other jobs to do in this college. But what I need from all of you is engaged creative thinking about exactly what our future needs to be. You bring the perspective of your discipline. We'll have the overarching guidance of the discovery themes identifying a number of different uh, grand challenges. And what we need to do is blend all of those thoughts into the future of this college. And we have the academic credibility, we have the innovation to be able to identify where our greatest impact is going to be. But it is a balancing act. What do our curricula look like? What kind of teachers do we need to have? What courses need to be, uh, need to be taught? Some of those are very fundamental, foundational kinds of courses. And you know, we need to think about, as we bring in very specialized colleagues, how we continue to teach the things that, that need to be, be out there. The other component of our education is, of course, extension. The next year is the centennial of the Smith-Lever Act, which is the the foundation legislation of cooperative extension in the US. We have a responsibility to teach not only in the classroom, but across the state, nation, and world. You know, we teach in church basements. We teach in, in school auditoriums. A lot of our laboratories look suspiciously like fields and barns. You know, we have an obligation that is a bit unique within the educational portfolio of the university. And as we move ahead, we need to embrace that as well. That extension function within our college's mission actually highlights another one of the great strengths that we have, and that is the fact that our research spans the range from fundamental discovery to translation to practice. And that is a huge strength in what we do. Some of the faces I'm looking at this morning do that themselves within their own portfolio. But the real strength of this college is that we bring that mentality and we tie it together as a group. And that's something to celebrate. That's something that a lot of other organizations are not capable of doing. And we do it because it's in our DNA. Something that we really have to remember as we think about the balance of the kind of faculty that we'll be hiring in the future. So, you know, what, what should you be doing? What should we be doing? Well, I need you to dream about what we can be. Don't just dream with yourself. Dream in faculty meetings. Dream over coffee. Dream talking to those various folks that are, are representing the concepts that we know so well in these discovery theme processes at this point. What is your specific area of expertise Tell us about solutions to those grand challenges, to those big societal problems. I need you to be leaders. I need you to be leaders within the college, but more importantly, I need you to be leaders across the university and across your disciplines. I need you to be thought leaders. We have great ideas. We know where the gaps are and what the solutions will be. And we have to take that knowledge out and convince others to join us. And perhaps most importantly, I need you to adjust your own mindsets. The good news here is that I'm not asking you to make a big change. I'm asking you to make incremental rather than evolutionary change. But you should wake up thinking about your job with words like collaboration entrepreneurship, innovation. If you don't see yourself as contributing to those kinds of characteristics, come and talk to me. I'll help you stretch your brain. That's what a university is all about. It's about creativity. It's about innovation. It's about thinking things that nobody else has ever thought. And in our case, finding a way to use that to solve problems. We have that capacity. Don't lock it away. You know, work on your mindset. Think about that actively. The discovery themes, the, the, the thought of, of moving our campus east 
within the, the campus footprint. You know, these aren't threats to us. These are truly once in a lifetime opportunities. My perception you know, coming in is the, the only threat that I see is if uh, 15 years from now we're standing on the west bank of the Olentangy waving as the university sails into the future. We have not realized the potential of this college. We have not uh, fulfilled our obligations to society. You know, the university's grand challenges are our grand challenges. There are very other, very few other places around the world that can say this, that the weight of an entire university with the reputation and capacity of The Ohio State University is here to do our bidding is truly uh, a remarkable point in time. You know, I just to close, uh, if you've been to sporting events here or seen other or uh, other sorts of, of uh, uh, online or, or TV sorts of presentations. You've seen that commercial set where you know they've got all these little faces showing up saying, "I'm a Buckeye for life." And you know, I actually uh, uh, auditioned for that, but I kept saying, "I'm a Bug Guy for life," and you know, just kept getting it confused. The fact is that uh, you know it's been a long time since I was on this campus, but I come back and I find that I am a Buckeye for life. And the reason is, we have the privilege of working in a place that is absolutely unique. At this time and space, in terms of the potential we have to solve society's problems, let's take advantage of that. It's gonna require everything I can bring to the table, but more importantly, everything you can bring to the table to do that. What we talk about the rest of today with our successes, with the opportunities you'll hear about the speakers talk about this afternoon, that is simply a window into what can be, in my opinion, what needs to be. And I pledge to do everything I can to help make you successful in achieving these goals. Thanks very much for the opportunity this morning.